Today we're going to finish our geometry standards. We skipped over standard G5, which was focused on angles, and we're also going to come back to standard G9, which is focused on volume. So starting with G5, angles, number one says to select all the pairs that are alternate exterior angles. Now when we see the word alternate, that means they're on opposite sides of this transversal line. And then exterior, that means they are outside these two parallel lines. So an example of alternate exterior angles would be angle one and angle seven. They're on opposite sides of the transversal and they're outside the parallel lines. Another example would be angles four and six. And these are both the pairs of alternate exterior angles. Number three in the figure, D, E, and F are parallel lines. What is the value of X? For one thing, we don't even have to use D. That's extra information. One thing I do notice is that this angle is obtuse. This angle is acute. They are not the same. But if I were to take this angle 60 degrees and move it up here, then I can see that these two add up to 180 degrees. So I'm gonna add them together and say, well, 60 plus X minus 30 equal 180 degrees. So I'm gonna solve this for X, which is what it's looking for. So 60 minus 30 is 30. So we get x plus 30 is 180 degrees. We want x by itself, so we'll subtract 30 from both sides of this equation. And we get that x is 150, which means um, that we have solved for x. And we could go back and double check and see if we plugged in 150 for x, 150 minus 30 is 120, and that is supplementary to 60 degrees. Number, uh, numbers four and five are using this diagram. Notice lines P and Q are parallel, and what is the measure of angle four? So we want to know this angle measure. We are given a 60 degree angle and a 58 degree angle. We know a few things. One thing that we could know is that that angle that's 58 degrees and angle four, that these are called consecutive interior angles. They're formed by being on the same side of a transversal line and they are supplementary. So the measure of angle 4 plus 58 is equal to 180 degrees. So I want to know the measure of angle 4 so I'm going to subtract 58 from both sides and I find that the measure of angle 4 is 122 degrees. So now I'm going to take what I know and plugging it in on my diagram and get a look at question number five. It says, what are the measures of angles one, two, and three? And once again, you can often find these different ways. Um, I'm going to start with angle one. I notice that angle one and 60 degrees are alternate interior angles. So the measure of angle one is 60 degrees. And we can say that it's an alternate interior angle. Okay, angle two. Well, angle two and 58, they are congruent because, once again, they are alternate interior angles. And then the measure of angle three could be found different ways. One way is we could notice that 60, 58, and angle three are supplementary. So I'm gonna say 60 plus 58 plus the measure of angle three equal 180 degrees. So that is 118 plus the measure of angle three is 180 degrees. We want angle three by itself, so we're gonna subtract 118 from both sides. We get that the measure of angle three is 62 degrees. We know that because of uh, those, two, those three angles being supplementary. 
Number eight, what are the measures of angles one and two? This looks like a little bit of a complicated diagram, but I quickly notice angle one here. It's part of this triangle here. And I do notice that this triangle extends to add an exterior angle. And using exterior angles theorem, <clears throat> we can say the too far away or remote interior angles, the measure of angle 1 plus 21.6, total the exterior angle 117.5. So I'm going to get that angle 1 by itself by subtracting 21.6 from both sides. And I find that the measure of angle 1 is 95.9 degrees. Now angle 2 um, also uses a triangle. I'm looking for angle 2 here, but I do notice a triangle that it's within. It's an interior angle, as is 39.1, and if I extend this side of that triangle, I get this angle that's 95.9 degrees as an exterior angle that we just found. So, we say that the measure of angle 2 plus 39.1 equal 95.9 degrees. We want the measure of angle 2 by itself, so we'll subtract 39.1 from both sides. And we find that the measure of angle 2 is equal to 56.8 degrees. And so this matches answer choice B. Number nine, select all statements that are true about triangle JKL and triangle LMN. <clears throat> well, the first one says they have only one pair of congruent angles. I can actually figure out what these angle measures are. So let's go through and solve that, and then we can go back and answer some questions. So one thing that I notice is we have two lines that cross, which means that these two angles that are formed on opposite sides of these crossing lines are vertical and have the same measure. So I can say this, that 5x plus 15 is equal to 4x plus 25, and I can solve that for x. So I've got an x term on both sides. I'm going to subtract 4x from both sides. I get that 1x, or x, plus 15 is equal to 25. And then subtracting 15 from both sides, we find that x is 10. Using that, I can find all these missing angles. So, 5x plus 15 is 5 times 10 plus 15, which is 65. Here, 4x plus 25 is 4 times 10 plus 25, which is 65. Here, so those angles, of course, have to both be 65 because they're vertical. 4x plus 5 is 4 times 10 plus 5, which is 40, plus 5 is 45. Here, 7x is 7 times 10, which is 70. So this angle is 70 degrees. Now I know that all three angles add up to 180 degrees. So 180 minus 70 minus 65 equals 45 degrees. And then here, 180 minus 65 minus 45 equal 70 degrees. So that first choice is not correct because all of the angles um, correspond they have three pairs of congruent angles, that is true. Triangle JKL has angles 45, 65, and 70, that's true. Triangle LMN has angles 45, 65, and 70, that is true. And since all the angles are the same, they have to be similar triangles. That is true. Standard G9 is about volume, and we're going to use our formulas from the reference sheet on these. 
Number two, what is the volume of the cylinder? Write your answer in terms of pi. That means we're gonna leave pi alone in our answer. So we're dealing with a cylinder. So the formula is V equal pi R squared times the height. And I'm just gonna plug things in. I'm gonna leave pi alone. The radius is halfway across the circle, which is seven, and we'll square that. And the height is 12. So now I'm gonna um, find that seven squared times 12 is 588. I'm gonna leave pi alone, and this is in centimeters cubed. Number three, a golf ball has a diameter 1.68 inches. A ball is a sphere. What is its volume? Use 3.14 for pi and round your answer to the nearest hundredth. So I'm gonna start with my formula. Volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. It gives me the diameter, it's 1.68, so the radius is half of that, which is 0 0.84. We'll plug in everything we know. 4 thirds, it says use 3.14 for pi, and the radius is 0 0.84, and we're cubing that. And I'm just going to plug those numbers into my calculator. I get this decimal that keeps on going to the nearest hundredths place. And look at that digit in the hundredths place, 8. That 1 will not round up. It'll stay at 2.48 inches cubed. Number 6. The base radius of a cone is 8 millimeters, and its volume is 320 pi millimeters cubed. What is its height? So let's start with the fact we're talking about a cone. So I'm going to write the cone formula. Volume is equal to one-third pi r squared times the height. It gives us the radius is 8. So r is equal to 8. It gives us the volume. So v is equal to 320 pi. It's asking what is the height? We don't know. So 320 pi equal one-third pi the radius is 8 squared, and we don't know the height. So I'm just going to go through and do some simplifying. 1 third times 8 squared, which is 64, is 21 and a third. And then we have pi times the height. Now I've got pi on both sides. I'm just going to divide both sides by 21 and a third pi because I want the height by itself. And I can do this in the calculator. This cancels on the right side. On the left side, when you divide pi by pi, those go out. And that's 15. So the height is 15 millimeters.